Hello and a very warm welcome to our daily service. It's a wonderful thing to know that our God is supreme. In all the ups and downs of life, times when we're confused and we don't know what's going on, we can be sure that God is lovingly in control. We're going to look now at some words from Psalm 18. We're about to say these words together. And David in Psalm 18 is rejoicing in the fact that God has just rescued him from his enemies, particularly from King Saul. And then he reflects on the security he has because God looks after his eternal king. So together, let's say these words. The Lord lives. Praise be to my rock. Exalted be God my saviour. He is the God who avenges me, who subdues nations under me, who saves me from my enemies. You exalted me above my foes. From a violent man you rescued me. Therefore I will praise you, Lord, among the nations. I will sing the praises of your name. He gives his king great victories. He shows unfailing love to his anointed, to David and to his descendants forever. Loving Father, we praise you that you can be completely trusted because you reign supreme. And we praise you now that we live in the days since the Lord Jesus, great David's greatest son has come and has lived on earth, has died, been raised and is now ascended, seated at your right hand. Help us to rejoice in him and to trust in him for your name's sake. Amen. This week we've been looking at the magnificent chapter 2 Samuel 7. God makes amazing promises to David and I'm going to read a section of 2 Samuel 7 now. I will raise up your offspring to succeed you, your own flesh and blood, and I will establish his kingdom. He is the one who will build a house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father and he shall be my son. When he does wrong, I will punish him with a rod wielded by men, with floggings inflicted by human hearts. But my love will never be taken away from him, as I took it away from Saul, whom I removed from before you. Your house and your kingdom shall endure for ever before me. Your throne shall be established for ever. Louis XIV of France made clear instructions about what should happen in his funeral. It was to take place in Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris and there should be no lights on anywhere except one solitary candle on top of his coffin. As Massillon, the court preacher, went to preach the sermon, he passed the coffin with the one candle on it and he blew it out. And then he began his sermon with these words, Only God is great. Only God is great. It was an important reminder. All human rule comes to an end. Kings die, presidents get voted out of office, but the kingdom of God lasts forever. Here's a promise to King David. He's going to be the founder of a house, a dynasty, and from his line one great king will come, the son of David, the son of God, and his will be an eternal kingdom. And so we read on in the Bible wondering who this great king will be. And Solomon, David's son, succeeds him. He makes a great start. He's a very wise king. Huge power. He submits to God. Everything seems to be going very well. But then he turns away from God and he dies. It's not him, this eternal king. Well, there are other kings that replace Solomon. But then the Babylonians crush the people of Judah, take them into exile, and there are no more kings of Judah from that moment on. But the prophets remembered this amazing promise in 2 Samuel chapter 7 about a, a son of David who will be a son of God who will reign forever. And so the prophet Isaiah speaks these famous words, speaking about a future king. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. 
The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this. And we wonder, who is this great one? And there's a long wait. And then at last, the child is born of David's line in Bethlehem, the city of David. And as he grew up, he had an authority that had never been seen before. Of a nature, with a word he stilled the storm. I was sickness and disease. He gave sight to the blind, enabled the lame to walk, even raised the dead. He had power over the forces of evil, casting out demons with a word. And yet despite the beauty of his character and the greatness of his power, he was crucified. But that, of course, is not the end of the story. That wasn't a great defeat, it was the great victory over the forces of evil. And God raised him from the dead, thus demonstrating him to be the divine Son of God. And he was raised and then ascended to sit at the right hand of God, the position of highest authority and power in the universe. And one day he will return, and the Bible tells us, on that day every knee will bow, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, and then he'll reign over a perfected world forever. And what's the response? Well, of course, it begins, if we believe these things, with a commitment to submit to him. Jesus is Lord, not me. When I wake up in the morning, the question is not, how shall I live for myself today? But rather, how can I live for Jesus, my King? today. Submit to him and also trust in him. In a world where often things feel as if they're out of control, let's remember that Jesus is seated at the right hand of God and ultimate power belongs to him. And one day he'll put everything right and so we can be at peace and trust him. These are wonderful truths. We can Rejoice in a great gospel. And let's express our faith now in the words of this creed. We're picking up on the words of the Apostle Paul in Romans chapter 1. Together we say, We believe in God the Father, from whom grace and peace proceed, whom we serve with our whole heart. We believe in Jesus Christ, as to his humanity, born a descendant of David. We believe in the Holy Spirit, by whose power Jesus was declared to be the Son of God through his resurrection from the dead. We believe in Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's pray, and we'll begin by saying together this collect. Almighty Father, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of all, govern the hearts and minds of those in authority and bring the families of the nations divided and torn apart by the ravages of sin to be subject to his just and gentle rule, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. In the quietness, let's bring our own requests to the Lord. And now a prayer for those in need. Lord our Father, we pray for all who are troubled at this time. Bring healing to the sick, strength to those who care for them, relief to those in pain, friendship to those who are alone, and reassurance to those in doubt or distress of mind. May our love be so strong that seeing need we may never pass by on the other side. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our song reminds us that whatever's going on in the world, we can trust God. A mighty fortress is our God. His kingdom is forever.
It's wonderful, isn't it, to know that Jesus is Lord and his kingdom is an eternal kingdom. And so now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and all those you love, both now and forevermore. Amen.